Welcome back to the channel. In our case studies, we take you through start to finish of the tricky electrical faults which we see day to day. We'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process showcasing how we use scan tools, multimeters, test lights and other essential tools to navigate the complex world of auto electrics in a logical way. We hope you enjoy the ride and don't forget, drop a comment below if there's anything specific you'd like to see in future episodes. Let's dive in. So, welcome back to RMS. This week, we've got Jeep Renegade with a heated seat fault, and we've got no wiring diagrams, no diagnostics available for it. And yeah, it's one we tried to turn away. Um, the customer would come in, we said we don't do Jeeps, we don't do Chryslers, we can't get the information. Even if we can get the information and we get to the end of it, if it needs a control module, we can't really do any programming, anything like that. So, we prefer to say no. Is it what there's nobody else who can do it? really don't want to go to a dealer. I don't know where the local dealer is. I think it's 40, 50 miles away. He, he wanted me to have a go. So we agreed a couple of hours on it. We'd see how we go. If we was more confident that we could get into it and just work it out. Again, the, the both seats work on the same system. So that gave us something, you know. So it was fairly easy to, to semi go through. It looked like it was. So, so we decided to take it on, do a couple of hours on it, see what we can find, see if we can narrow it down, whether it's a control module, a seat pad, a switch or whatever and then go from there. But yeah, the customer's happy to pay us, so we're happy to have a quick look on the understanding. If we get to four or five hours and we cannot do it, you know, he's got to pay the time and then we'll move on to something else. So let's get into it, see what we can find. We'll go from there. Bosh! Right, so we've checked out this Jeep Cherokee. Um, it's got four wires underneath the seat for the uh, pad. It looks like two of them are heated, element one's two of them for the heater element and it looks like two of them might be for a temperature sensor, so it turns it off when it gets up to temperature, I think. Um, so we're gonna start it up, show you, I need to find out whether it's got a, a bottom pad and a rear pad, or just a bottom pad, um, because it's only got two wires in, it could loop up to the back and then back out, um, and it could be a broken wire in between, but let's just do a quick check to show the passenger side working. Then we'll probably strip the driver's seat down and do some more testing actually in the seat. So obviously they only work when they're running, so we can start it up. Let's go and show what it's doing. So, you can see, actually see exactly which way they all go down. Looks like it goes into the pad, and then... Is the rear one got a pad in it? Yeah, so a bit like a heated window, just going backwards and forwards. Um, but down there and down there. And we've got... So if it comes in on one, any break between that lot, it's only got two wires, or well, I think any break will stop it doing it. So yes, yeah, so with the front and rear pad, if the front and rear pad are running series, it will literally go in one wire, up through one pad, then out, down to the next pad, and turn the whole thing off. It hasn't got a plug for the front pad and a plug for the rear pad. So we need to see, we're gonna have to get the seat out, see how that works, see how they join, whether it's one big pad or, or what. But it's looking like, yeah, it is the actual seat unit at fault. So yeah, not too complicated for the testing side of it because we've got one, the other side what we could test. Uh, if we only had one side, if we only literally had the driver's side working or driver's side fitted, we wouldn't know what voltage we had on the temperature sensors and all that side of it. So let's get this driver's seat pulled back, see what we can find. Right, so we've got the seat out of the Jeep, uh, got it up on a, a little trolley, so I'll show you what we've got. So these are the main wires going into the heated seats. It looks like the two outers are the big, thick heater elements. Like I say, I think them two are literally just a temperature sensor so we can determine what's going on. Um, but if this is open circuit, so it's going to go down, round and round and round and round and round, back out, up this one, round and round and round and round and round, back out, and then back into there. I would think it might go off and tee off. But if it teed off, I think you'd lose one or the other, you know? So let's get this stripped out. I'll show you what I find. All right, we double checked this seat. We've worked out what's going on. The control module in the seat actually controls both seats, um, both pads. So what we found is we have got two heating elements, one in the base and one in the back, um, and they're both around six ohms. We've checked it at the back. We've checked it on the passenger side one. So if we show you here, and they're running parallel. So. We've got six ohms on this one, but on the back of the 40 one, we've actually got about 60 ohms. Um, so we've got, yeah, not a good circuit in it. 
Um, that one there. So yeah, that's 60 ohms. So on the passenger seat, when we connect up this 6 ohm and the rear 6 ohm, again, because they're in parallel, that actually works out to 3 ohms. But again, if we just go directly into here, what the module would be seeing, it is still, you know, 5.1, 5.2. So as far as we can see, the module is not liking the difference. It's looking for a certain resistance before it turns them on. Um, but we will double check it just to see if the module's failing or anything like that. But I need to get the seat back into it and have a check out. But the problem we've got with a rear pad is the way this undoes is actually zipped up and it's actually sewn together so it can't come undone. So we'd have to unpick that to then unzip the whole thing right the way around to get to it. Um, I assume it's going to have a, another connector like this in there. So it could be a faulty connector. But I don't know how far the customer wants to go. So we've agreed a couple of hours just to have a look at it. We've gone further than that because we think we can find it. But now it is getting quite deep. So I'm going to speak to the customer, see what it wants to do. I need to put something in it to get the car out of the workshop so we need to get a couple more out. I'll let you know. We've stripped the seat down, uh, managed to get into the back of it, spoke to the customer. He's happy like, let's just go ahead, get things done. So got into the back of the seat and this is where we're at. This is where we're at. So we've had to unzip all along here, all down there. Um, and what we found is this plug, this is the loom, what comes from the control module. And this is the, uh, this is the actual seat pad. And as I say, we checked on the other one and that's six ohms as well. But we've gone direct, so we know it's not a bad connection. And again, we've gone to that and we are 60 ohms. So yeah, we've definitely got a, an issue in this pad for the rear pad. So we need to find out whether they're available or not. So the main thing is, is we need to double check that that's going to work. I've only got to take the rear pad off. Now I've managed to unzip that so it's fairly easy to do. I can get it back in the car. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to get two wires from the other side rear pad, pull them across, just go into there so it thinks that there's two pads. If we turn it on and the rear pad on the passenger side and the bottom pad on this side all works, we know the module's good, the wiring's good, everything's good, and it'll be all right. So let's get that done. Done a bit of a, a bit of a bypass. So because the rear pad on this seat was not working, We've literally come out the loom of the car, of the seat, wired it down and gone into the connection of this seat, but just disconnected the pad. So again, so all that, mean, all that means is we've got a six ohm resistance showing on the rear pad. It comes through, connects into this, three ohm resistance on the bottom pad of this seat. The module sees it's all okay and it loves it. So uh, let's see if it works. There we go. So the bottom pad on the driver's side is working. Rear pad on that one. So that means we put a new pad in the back there. That's going to be good. So we've done a bypass on the seat. It's all working. Just want to turn it off and we see a bit of smoke, which worries you a tad. So all of a sudden, I'm like, what? Check this out. Can you see that? Just a whiff of smoke and it's up around there. Now that made me worry. So yeah, stupid little air freshener, putting smoke into the car while you're doing electrical fault. Oof, not fun. So basically this one's all done. Uh, we're going to get the seats back in it now. Bottom all up. It looks like I can take the rear pad off with the seat in there. Um, let's find out if they're available and we can go back to the customer until we get the part. So there we go. Another one done. Again, goes to show scan tools etc don't really fix cars um, we do need to go into it and have a methodical sort of approach to it so yeah we had no information we got no diagrams no nothing can't get hold of them didn't want to do it but the customer was insistent they wanted us to do it and we managed to get to the end of it so we've shown it working obviously on on one rear pad one bottom pad but yeah just thought we'll show you what we do how we do it and yeah hope you like it so if you'd like to drop a comment down below if there's anything you'd like to see on the next one hit the like button, hit the bell notification, and if you haven't yet, maybe subscribe before you leave. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next one.